Alright. I'm going to make a fire. I'm going to put this little fuel tablet right in here. <laughs> Match. Okay, different match. Still a one match challenge. Once you get one lit, then you can use that. Don't drop, put it down carefully. Is it still going? Once the fuel tablet goes, it'll go. As long as it's touching. Don't want to put it out, right? Yeah. You get some kind of a brace to lean your kindling on. Huh. Right, so your kindling goes up and over like that. Yeah. Right? Remember? Yeah. Okay. Because you don't want to smother it, right? It still needs to breathe. Everything is soaked out here. We've had a lot of rain. It's really hard to find dry tinder. And we don't want a big campfire, right? We're just yeah. testing the theory, right? Yeah. <sighs> Breathe a little bit. All right. Try it again. It's okay. It's practice. Yeah, we keep fire starters and we keep fuel tablets in our emergency kit, right? Our emergency fire starting kit, and it's always a good idea to practice. Right? Just because you have a fuel tablet in your kit doesn't mean you're going to be able to get a fire started, right? Interesting technique. Got a platform down there. <laughs> oh. Matches are tricky. Okay, try again. No, there's no more there. Don't blow it out. Hmm. It's going. Going a little bit. Let the fuel tablet catch first before you start piling on the tinder. Okay. Easier way to do it. Oh, that's okay. Try again. Easier way to do it. Instead of moving your match once you put it down, move your fuel tablet. Okay? But it's out, so it needs to get relit. If you put the match close enough, it will. And if you don't put it close enough, then you just move the tablet over a little bit. Can you catch this one? Fire? Nope, you do it. You're practicing. Yeah, but it burns through it and it hurts. Hmm. You can try to do it without closing it. Maybe. Alright, new strategy. No.
Move the fuel tablet. Move the fuel tablet. We just talked about this. Not right on the flame. Where? On the matchstick, just down from the flame. You don't want to smother your right flame. Here? Sure. Maybe a little bit closer. But just a nudge. There you go. You don't want to put it out, right? There you go. So, we're going to think about proper fire building here. You need to have something to lay your kindling on so it doesn't smush that fire. Right? You need something at the back here, like a log or something, or a rock. A log? Or a pile of dirt. Yeah, we're doing this backwards. You're supposed to do your fire prep first and get everything ready, and then light it. Now, this one's lit. Is this good? Yeah, that would probably work. Right here. Yeah, and then you can get your twigs and stuff and your bark, and you can lay them over the flame onto your back brace. What? Oops. <laughs> okay, and then the flame can still get through. Yeah. There you go, and you're not smothering it. Okay, and once that stuff is lit and it's going, then you can put more on top of that. Okay, let it... See how it's smoking at the top? And you look underneath, it's flamey? Yeah. Because yeah, it's a little too bunched on the top, I think. Okay, you need to get some more... Kindling. Kindling, look at all the kindling on the ground, but we need kindling that's up off the ground. Now you got to race to try to get enough kindling and fuel to keep your fire going and not waste your flame. Oops. Our intention today is not to make a big fire, but to do some fire starting practice. It's been a good session for Abby because she did not do proper fire prep before she lit her fire. She had a hard time getting it go which is fine, but now she's scrambling to get fire prep. Thanking, thankfully, we are in cedar and pine forest, and there are lots of dead branches around here for her. And she's only eight. She's got some learning to do, but sometimes, sometimes an almost failure is a much better teacher than a complete success. Just gonna gently, gently feed this and let her do her thing. There you go, yep. Yeah, so they rest on the back brace so they don't collapse your fire.